Okay, we're back again. Welcome everybody. I just wanted to update my app on Instagram so that I could bring people on and it looks like I can. Um, so this is great. Hi, welcome back you guys. Sorry about that. I uh, Instagram now has the ability to bring four people up live. And so I wanted to update my more people up. So this is great. This is exciting. I'm very, very happy. Uh, hello, welcome. I'm so happy that you guys are here with us. And right. it's working. It's really okay, awesome. Cool, it, looks cool, like, cool. Um, it looks like you can add more people. So yeah, this is great. So um, hi, Kyla, my little love bug. I saw you joining. Um, all right, so episode three, Awakening. And um, let's start with kind of describing a little bit of what we both, we, we just came back from Belize. Lori had a massive breakdown. Um, <laughs> we won't go into all of the details of her literal massive breakdown, uh, but it was uh, interesting. And Jason went through his own kind of um, shift as well. So do you, and then we'll bring you guys on screen. So um, yeah. do you want to just start with kind of what? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So um, first of all, I do want to say that the month of March, I want to bring in sort of like the energy that I'm feeling with it. And the energy that I feel, there's like a theme to what I would call four months out of the year that are, that are different than the rest. And those are the months where there's like an energetic shift on earth. So they call them equinoxes or solstices, which we all know. March happens to be the equinox coming up on March 20th. And with that, there's a massive energetic shift that happens. So usually what I do, by the way, is I always go on like a, some sort of fast, just like press the reset button. And I guess subconsciously preparing for something like that and knowing that this month, for me at least, and my intention with this month and the energy that I feel that it holds is more so just to take a break for a second because we've been doing so much work and we've been going so much. It's almost like an oil change on the car. If you go 100,000 miles, you got really far. But if you don't change its oil, if you don't give it a second to relax, then the engine can blow. So that's what I see the month of March sort of embodying and its resonance and what it brings to all of us with a reset button of, of literal new energy. And with that, it kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't really thinking about it. But on a personal level, I went through just like a mat. There was like a massive weight on my shoulders and on, on, on me in general. And I'm like, Oh my God. And I started questioning myself and, Oh my God, am I doing what I'm doing? And like, you know, this is all very new for me as well. So it's, it was just like this whole sort of massive shift that I was going through. And what I felt the need to do and I did, which was on Sunday night was this upgrade. Cause I felt like we all are going through some sort of thing on the collective level where we've done so much work over these like really hectic and chaotic and heavy energetically heavy over the past few months and now is the time to really just say okay and it's almost like what a computer does when it upgrades when you upgrade the software of the computer it always says we're going to have to shut your computer down and we're going to have to restart and restart and reboot it in order to help have that happen and that's almost like what we're going through right now and i was shut down 48 hours i was like i needed to be in bed i needed to go to sleep I slept in a room without windows for the first time and I don't even know how long and I, I didn't know what time it was at any point. I just needed time to shut down and restart. So that's what I've been going through. I'm feeling much better, but I, I, I found that personally I'm feeling much better because I chose to honor the fact that I have to chill out for a second. As much as I didn't like that at the time because I was like, I'm on a roll. I want to keep going. I'm like, no, no, no. You got to chill. You got to stop. You got to relax. And let your body do its thing because in order to upgrade, you got to shut down for a moment. So those are my feelings, my experience, and my uh, insights, I would say, over the past week or so. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. When I started to go through the shift, it was the Saturday night. Sunday morning We got when I got back from Belize. And mm -hmm. um, I slept more than I've ever slept that week. I slept 14 hours, 18 hours, 16 hours. And... Um, and I was purging and I was like releasing and letting go of people in my life and speaking truth that I'd never spoken to certain people and questioning the things that I was doing in my job and, you know, in this work and how I'm showing up and, and the voice I'm using when I show up and the sovereignty. It was like every night 
my guy that I was working with, he said, I want you to stand in the middle of the room at night, like no lights, just my little salt lamps. He's like, I want you to stand in the, in the middle of this room and I'm gonna do a really powerful kind of sovereignty meditation around you. Um, and so every night this past week, I've been standing in the middle of my living room and he's been doing this really powerful sovereignty prayer sort of thing where it's like, this is all about you, Lori, and your sovereignty and your truth and your knowingness and your energy. And like, where are you putting your energy? Where is your energy going? And, and who, who's in your world? Who's in your field, right? Mm -hmm. And, and why are they in your field? And, and, and these are the questions that we start to ask ourselves as we start to upgrade, as we start to shake off the old and step into the new. Um, the exhaustion is one of the most powerful and potent signs that your body's being upgraded. Physical symptoms, physical pains, right? I mean, I've had rashes on my wrists. I got burned on my lips. I mean, I lived at the beach my whole life. I lived at the beach never got sunburned. So all of these things are just the physical <laughs> way that the body is energetically upgrading like a computer system. Even like with, with Instagram right now, we had to shut down, reboot exactly. so that we could do a new thing. Um, so the reason that I think this is important for us to talk about right now is that there's, there's nothing wrong. These are really beautiful opportunities to embrace these upgrades like humanity has never been through this before right we've, we've you and i have never been through what we've just went through we we, mm -hmm. we just were like i don't know what this is but i'm gonna give it my all i'm gonna throw up my hands and just say yes to all of it like yes to all of it yes yes what else and if there's anything that i can really throw to people right now is that every single thing that you're feeling everything you're being everything that's coming in is literally an opportunity to ask yourself, does this still serve me? Is this still an aspect of me that I wanna be? Is this person who I want in my life? Is this, is the way I use these words the way I wanna be? Like, is, is this me or am I courageously willing to jump into a new version of me? Which means massive releasing of emotion and belief systems and thoughts and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's magical what we're doing. You, you just like sparked something in me that I remembered. And I, I, this is the perfect time to read this. It's, it's something short that I wrote when I was going through what I was going through. This is a sneak peek into my personal journal. <laughs> I love it. I, I wrote, what is an upgrade? An upgrade is when an old version of you dissolves in order for a new and improved version of you to step in. This means that within every upgrade exists a death, a death of the you that, no long, that you no longer embody, a death of the actions, behaviors, and desires that once satisfied you, a death of everything you used to embody that no longer serves you, and of course, a rebirth of a new you, a self-serving you, a you that embodies the new resonance and alignment with your new upgrade, which is exactly what you just said, and it's it's... It's a letting go process, you know, it's just like Instagram did their update, right? They had to let go of certain bugs in their code in order to incorporate new and improved parts of that app. So now we can bring people on screen. And if we can apply that understanding, because it's, it's always reflective in our life around us. If we can apply that understanding to our own life and what we're going through, I mean, it's, it's exactly what's happening. We have to be willing to just say, I'm letting go of that part of me that no longer serves me, even though I'm used to it, even though I'm comfortable with it, I'm gonna let go of it. And I'm just gonna shoot moving forward and let what has to happen happen next because the upgrade system is universal intelligence. It's your higher self doing its thing. So it's, it's, it's nothing to do with the mind and logic and any of that. It's literally what happens to us naturally. And all we have to do is really just not get in its way. So that's, that's what I've learned over the past few days. Just, I mean, if your body, if your being, if your spirit, if your soul is telling you, go sit down, close your eyes and just breathe. I mean, I've done that more in the past week than I did over the past five months. And it wasn't, there was no effort in it. 
because I had to do it now. So it was almost like it was effortless because it's exactly what had to happen at this point in time. And it was, it was just a beautiful experience. So. The other thing I'd like to say about these upgrades is that this isn't like a spiritual experience, meaning like this has nothing to do with like a spiritual path. This has to do with being human and mm -hmm. evolving as a human. So it's like, oh, well, if you're, if you're evolved and that upgrades are going to be different, or if you're in a different state of consciousness, then you're not going to have upgrades or whatever kind of judgments people may have around how this evolution works, throw it out, throw every boxed in linear belief that you hold around how anything is mm -hmm. so that you can actually step into the magic of what's actually occurring in the physical body, which is shifting frequencies. And what, what is occurring right now is, is an asking of your higher self or an asking of this higher version of you to let go because where you are now is not where you're going to be at the end of this month. I can guarantee you that. And if you allow yourself to say, okay, I'm, a, I'm, I'm surrendering. Like for instance, yesterday, last night, I sat on the couch and I had this massive amount of loneliness come in super potent loneliness feeling. And it was like, just sit, just be with that loneliness. And so I was dissecting like, well, what's happening? How, what, what's going on here? Right. And it's like the loneliness is literally dissolving that consciousness that you've held on to from the age of whatever, from whatever trauma it was stored in your body from it's releasing, mm -hmm. it's releasing out of your body. And the more I just sat and felt it, it was like, okay, I'm safe. I'm not gonna die. I don't need to go and fix it. I don't need to go into it, try to like figure out how to not feel it. Um, and those are the moments that the upgrades are all about. That's the moment, right? Those are the, that's the upgrade moments. Um, yep. That's yep. it. <laughs> it. You know, sometimes I like take a step back like over these past week and I, I do this a lot where I kind of like disassociate myself, like my actual real self from me. I don't know if that makes sense, but like I, I like lose the Jason for a second and I'm just like, okay, just like, like now, now let's be like the spirit and just chill and feel it. And I always end up laughing because I'm like, you know, I, it, it always makes me think, makes me or allows me and helps me take things less seriously. And, and it's like, it's kind of really fun. You know, because when we're in ourselves as our identified versions of ourselves, we're like, oh, my God, this is crazy. This is hard. This is and I'm not saying it is and it is. I mean, this week was not easy for me. But the, the, the most fun part of this week were those few moments and those gaps of, of time that I like zoomed out and stepped out. And I, I couldn't help but laugh because I it just brought me to this place of like complete zoom out. And it, it, it just became fun because I saw it happening to a body, not my body, just, just a body, what it's going through. And it's like, wow, this, this machine, this thing is amazing. And it's like, how, do, how does it do that? You know, it's incredible. And it's like, it's not like a regular machine made out of like metal with a computer with a screen. It's like this living thing that does, it's, it's unbelievable. So it's unbelievable. It's like, it's like, it's almost, yeah. Stepping into like the, 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 universal intelligence that operates the the physical aspect of the body that's where i went to instead of being the body and it made it a whole lot easier yeah it, I it made it a fun that. process <laughs> okay. I, I couldn't find i couldn't find humor i was literally like you guys there were moments <laughs> where i was like i was on the ground like am i gonna freaking survive this like yeah, what, yeah, yeah. the freak I mean, literally, I've never, I've never called in a guide to sit with me like I did these past eight days. I legit was like, if I don't have assistance, I'm, I mean, I'm so close with my guides, right? These higher dimensional light beings, but I needed a freaking partner in crime to walk me through this because I literally was, I thought my whole world was like the the ground was shaking and i was losing the ground that i was used to standing on and mm -hmm. and 
I mean, listen, I am so willing to go anywhere with whatever is shown to me. Like if I have to go in, I'll go in. If I have to let go of things, I'll let go of things. If I, whatever I need to do, I'll do, I, I, I'll do it. Um, but I was like, oh, shit, with this one, <laughs> you know, and, and I want to remind, I want to let you guys know, or just kind of give you a reminder that, that the reason I've been talking about this so much this week is because it takes a lot of courage to, to be in this. It takes a lot of courage to trust that this is, that, that what you're going through, that really intense sort of shift is actually moving you or, in, or inviting you to embrace these beautiful new aspects of you. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like we're, we've got a new suit on almost, right? Or new, a, new, a new computer, like you said. Um, but what's so magical is that it's physically happening now. Like we're physically actually experiencing what we've talked about, like the ascension, the ascension, the ascension, the ascension, stepping into higher states of consciousness, higher states of consciousness. And now we're like actually physically experiencing it in, in a very like real way. Um, and it's just going to continue. It's just going to continue. Um, so I think the more that we can talk about it, the more it just becomes like, oh, did you have an upgrade last week? Yeah, I was sleeping for three straight days. You know, it just becomes a normal thing that we talk about. And um, it's, it's just part of, part of this journey. Part of it, 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 it is a normal thing. We just, just not accept it on like the super collective, massive mainstream level, but it is very normal. Before we start bringing people on screen or answering questions, whatever we're doing first, I want to share something. Um, because I've been becoming more open to certain parts of myself that I was close to in the past, specifically when it comes to things like guts. This past week, because you said this, that, that you've never called in somebody or one of your guides to come and help you. And I've never called it this, but I'm going to start because that's exactly what's going on on my level as well. There's a specific individual who is or was, however you want to say it, a part of TLS, one of the leaders, and he's no longer with us physically over here. So we would call him dead. He's not. He's just somewhere else. Um, and he's doing incredible work. You can call him a high vibrational light being because that's exactly what he is, where he is, and what he's doing. I was always told that if I wanted to speak to him directly and communicate with him directly, at this point when he was no longer here, you write a letter, you burn it in a specific place. There's a specific place between two things over here where I burn it. And that's my way of communicating with him. Now, I never write to him just like that. I only write if there's something crazy going on that I really don't know how to get through. And this was, this past week was one of the three times probably that I've ever written to him in need of guidance and assistance. And the second I wrote that letter with everything that I got, with all my heart, and I burnt that, was the second, I mean, overnight, everything shifted for me. And I, I could almost feel, not almost, I could definitely feel his presence helping me and assisting me. So we can call that guides. I know that I don't usually use that term, but that's exactly what it is. So I wanted to share that with all of you. And um, I know that I don't usually use those terms because I'm not used to it, but that's exactly what's happening. So I, I thought I would share that experience. I love it. I think that, you know, we all have, all of us, have particular beings, masters, angels, whatever word you want to use. It's all just energetic consciousness. We all have them around us and they're just waiting. They're just hanging out waiting for us to call them in. And it's not like you and I saw these beings, right? It's not like we physically even knew they were around mm -hmm. um, or that they were even really assisting us. Like I couldn't prove to you that this ascended master that I was working with was with me, but I felt it. Um, and I, and I knew it and I, and I chose, it's a choice. I chose to believe that he was. Um, and so 
we are going to need more assistance than ever before as we go through the rest of this human journey. And so you came in with guides. You chose a team of beings to be with you. And there is no better time than right now to start calling them in. And you don't have to try to control how it works. You just call them in. Have yeah. them stay with you. Have them sit with you. Have them, have them like, just have them be with you. And then let go of trying to control it and stop saying that you're blocked. Stop saying that you can't. Stop saying there's something wrong with you because you're only creating that reality. There's nothing wrong with you and you're not blocked. Yep. So call them in and, um, and receive it. It's been amazing for me. And just a, a word from, from my end for anybody that did uh, grow up or was raised in a more uh, a mainstream community where things like what we're speaking about aren't accepted, I could tell you, embrace everything that's being spoken about embrace those guides embrace your assistant embrace those spirits because the moment you embrace them the moment you acknowledge them the moment you understand that you've always had that assistance all you have to do is realize it and call that upon yourself because they're there always so i mean i'm i i shared that because i really came from the other side and it's, 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 I mean, if I spoke like that to my family, they would look at me and say, what are you talking about? And if you're going through an experience like that, if you come from a household like that or an environment like that, embrace what you're feeling because it can really, really take you a far way. Yeah. And then one more thing about guides working with you. Yep. I, I say this a lot in my Patreon community, but it sounds like your own voice. Okay. So you're going to think that you're talking to yourself. So you're going to hear some, you're, you're going to hear a voice in your, in your head that's going to say, go stand in the middle of the room and we're going to do a meditation. Now I could say to myself, that's just me telling me to go to my living room. That sounds crazy. I'm not going to do it. Or I could choose to believe that it might be something other than me. And there might be a bigger piece to this. And I'm just going to say, screw it. I'm going to do what's coming through. So we have to start to remember the way this works is that it's filtered through you. It's filtered through your channel. So it's, it's going to sound like you. It's not going to sound like, you know, George Schmorge down the road. It's going to sound like you because it's coming through you. So it'll, it'll sound like you're a voice in your head when you start to, to connect to other energies. That's what telepathy is. You know? Also, I found my experiences come through that. They also come through songs. There are certain times where a song comes on and I know that that song didn't come on randomly. There's, there's a message coming through for a very, very simple purpose. I mean, it happened to me when I was writing my second book, the second I finished the outline, the, the moment I finished it, that song in dreams that I showed you, Lori, came on and I started bawling. I was crying my eyes out because I knew, not only I knew it was a message, I, I could feel who it was. And it was so clear and so vivid that, I mean, messages can come through literal voices in your head. Messages can come through songs. They can come through notifications on your phone. There's no limit to how these things work. It's just paying attention to things around you, things within you, and learning to read those signs because everything is a sign. There's no coincidence here. Things don't happen just because. There's a reason we're always being guided. We just have to be we just have to consciously choose to see that guidance and, and we'll see it everywhere. You know, <laughs> what I, you know what I do sometimes with songs? Yeah. So if I want to get a message, I do this all the time. So I'll be listening on my Spotify and I'll, and I'll ask for some sort of message around something and I'll look at the clock and I'll add up all the numbers to get a number. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's 12, whatever, 12, 13, mm -hmm. I'll add up one day. And I'll get the number like seven and then I'll hit a playlist and I'll, I'll, it'll be on um, like random where it just picks different songs and I'll go to the seventh song. So I'll be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the seventh song is the message. I do I that all the time. No, I, listen, it, it all works. There's no like, you know, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's always, we just have to be able to kind of, embrace that that's why i'm saying that the moment i embraced it from a place where it wasn't accepted was the moment things started opening up in, in a massive massive way yeah so.
Yeah. It's, it's powerful times right now. It's a lot. This month is, um, I mean, every now moment. It's just, this, this, is, this is really, this is a really transformative um, time that we're in right now. Um, mm. And we have the opportunity, you guys, right now to really embrace, you know, it's like the rubber's hitting the road. The rubber is literally hitting the road. That's a really weird analogy. What does that mean? The rubber hits the road. <laughs> no, honest. What does that mean? <laughs> the rubber hits the road. I mean, I know what it means. Know, tell me what you feel. It came in, so talk about it. Well, the rubber hits the road. It means you're gonna get. It's time to get going. But like literally, the rubber hits the road. Oh, like when the tires are spinning, right? You're going, yeah. going, going, and as soon as the tire hits the road, you go. I love it. Yeah. So anyways, the, the, the rubber hits, meets the road, whatever. Anyways, it's time. It's time to stop talking. The rubber, the rubber meets the road. The rubber, the rubber meets, meets the road. road. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Just getting real. That's basically what it means. So embrace it, you guys. Embrace the challenging conversations. Embrace the difficult letting goes. Embrace the mourning. I had to mourn a massive thing this week. I had to mourn something so huge. That I'm that it's still it's still not quite processing. It's it's there's massive things that we have to to let go of. Um, so and 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 amazing things to embrace in our lives, right? Oh, so it's just it's go time. I love it. Yeah. All right. So what what do you want to start with? You want to bring somebody on screen? You want to answer a question? Let's bring someone on. Go for it. Mm. 11. 11? 11 from the top. Okay. I'm envisioning the person who it is. I think I know. <laughs> this is going to be fun. There's three people. What's it going to look like? I think one big screen on bottom and two split on top. Oh, ah! There we go. How fun. <laughs> Switching to my AirPods here. <laughs> How are you guys? I'm so excited to be on with you. Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> What's your name? My name is uh, Diane. Diane Rule. Nice to awesome. meet you, Diane. Where, where are you from, Diane? I'm from Burbank, California. Cool. Awesome. I can see there's a big lag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's all right i think it just fixed itself do you have a question no oh, she's on the topic it. so your wi-fi is breaking up oh. no the connection's not good uh -uh. oh no your wi-fi is really bad it keeps breaking up oh weird mm-hmm okay Okay, let's try one more time. Go for it. I think I think it's it's, it's okay. smooth now. Okay, on communication with your guides, I have a question. Now, Lori, uh, I know recently you said that when your guides communicate with you, uh, it's through uh, energy mostly, um, and that got me thinking. I'm very clairaudient, and so when I'm communicating with my guides, I just hear the words. Um, is that Okay, or is, am I crazy? Okay. <laughs> okay, first I wanted to check on that. <laughs> first of all, and, everything's okay. It's all yeah. okay. So <laughs> however you are doing you is okay. <laughs> okay. And and on on that, um, a, a lot of this... It's kicking out again. Uh-oh. No. Yeah, it's bad. It's it's like cutting in and out. Oh shoot. Oh darn it. I hate okay, that. ask I it quickly. Let's see if we can get it in. Okay. Okay. Um there have been times, uh most of the time my information that I get is accurate, but there have been times where I've been able to validate that it was not accurate. And I just was wondering, like, I know even the best of psychics are not 100% accurate, but I just want to. I told 
this and this didn't even happen. I was like, well, maybe it's a shifted timeline. I know timelines can shift and things can change, but I wanted to ask about that. Okay, so I think what you're asking is, it got broken up a little bit. I think what you're asking is, how do I know if what I'm receiving is accurate or not? Like, how, how, how do I know? Is that basically what you're asking? Well, yes, but uh, sometimes I've been able to validate the accuracy, but then sometimes the non-accuracy. And so I wonder about the non-accuracy, like what, what happened there? <laughs> okay, so this is a great question because, uh, you know, for someone that channels, you, you have to understand that um, you have a filter. So there's literally an energetic channel that goes through your, your physicality, right? Yeah. And so every, cha every person has the ability to channel and every person that, is, that receives information and actually is consciously choosing to sort of digest or dissect that energy that's channeling has their own ego. They have their own traumas. They have their own belief systems. They have their own personality. Okay. And so you can't negate that as part of the channeling piece unless you're a trans channeler. Okay. So a trans channeler is where literally the energy is into the body and it sounds different. It sounds freaky. And even then personality still comes through. Ego still comes through. So you have to allow there's no black or white. You have to allow it all to just be okay. Like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, well, that piece got a little funky. And, and that's why in the spiritual community, everyone says, well, so-and-so said this, and so-and-so said that. And who ca it, it is what it is. And there is no d direct, perfect, channeled message. That's impossible unless yeah. you are that consciousness. So... You have to allow for error. You have to allow for this to be fun and enjoyable. And what resonates is great. If you're, if don't, don't look at this process as perfection and don't look at it as right because you're never necessarily going to be right. It's more of, it's a constant practice. It's a constant feeling into what feels right, what doesn't feel right. And just throwing up your hands and saying, forget it. I don't care. I'm, I'm learning, I'm practicing, I'm remembering how to do this. And I have an ego, I have a, a personality, I have traumas, I have belief systems. And I don't care what kind of channel you are, they always play a role in, mm -hmm. in how you dissect that information. Jason, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, I'd like to add on something that I didn't even know the word for that you just taught me, the trans channeling. Uh, trans channeling, it's called, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I've experienced that. Uh, not on myself, yeah, no, not on myself, but I've experienced it on somebody else where I was a part of something, seeing it happen. And uh, number one, you bring up a great point, and I completely agree with it. Everybody has their own lens. Uh, it could be uh, some sort of fear that's attached to it. So, for example, if we take uh, a lot of channelings having to do with extraterrestrials, one can have an experience where they're in a craft and there's some sort of surgery that they call mutilation or whatever it may be, and they're acting through a lens of fear. So even though what they thought might have actually been happening wasn't happening, for example, let's say that you were in a dentist's office and you were in surgery and you woke up from that surgery not knowing who the dentist was, not knowing what a dentist is, not knowing what that dentist is doing, all you know is there's a drill in my mouth and there's a problem here and this man is trying to kill me in a very peculiar and scary way. That's what it would look like, right? Mm -hmm. So that's an example of how a lens can play an effect on an interpretation of some sort of experience that channelers may have. Um, but with my experience of seeing somebody going through a trans channeling, if that's what we call it, it was a lot more, um, a lot more on point. I mean, everything changed on him from his voice to his eyes. I, I, I looked into his eyes and it was not his eyes. Everything changed. His mannerisms changed. Everything changed. So again, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but that trans channeling aspect would probably bring us closer to less error. But again, there, there's always error, like Lori said, because it's not a bad thing. It's just we all have our lens. We all have our associations. We all have our experiences. And those things allow us to interpret what we're channeling and what we're experiencing. Right, that makes sense. And and also, like I was thinking, well, sometimes it's probably like a timeline may have shifted or, you know, there's always shifts in the universe happening. So oh, like, 
yesterday when I channeled this such and such and thing, and then a week later, oh, that completely did not happen. That it was, was yeah. It, a timeline shift might have happened, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, what, the, the reason that, um, that you, you, you know, to, to uh, I've said this a couple times, um, but, you know, the ability to predict what's going to happen for yourself or for anyone else or the collective right now is, is it's almost impossible because of how quickly um, we are shifting probabilities. So to, 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 to channel information right now and for it to be pretty accurate is uh, is good job for that channeler because um, there's there's you know my guides will never tell me what's coming because although they see every probability that the human collective could step into they don't know which one we're going to step into um, and so there there are sort of massive experiences that we're going to have but in terms of like the the the, the details of how we're going to experience it it's very difficult to to really tap into that right now right now uh, more than any other time so throw out the throw it out trying to trying to be right just just yeah. be grateful that you're receiving and um and enjoy it have fun with it yeah and, and I would, that that's the freedom of choice by the way the freedom of choice means you can see a timeline it doesn't mean that's what's going to happen yeah yeah and um, about 15 years ago, I did this, I learned this technique uh, where I asked my spirit guides to kind of be on the right, behind my right shoulder and my angels to be behind my left shoulder. And I've had that in place for like, I don't know, 15 years or so. And so I know, I know that when I hear, and I pay attention to when, thing, where in my head things come through at, like, and so like, my spirit guides comes through like back here, my angels are on the right. And then, but sometimes I'll get something like in the middle of my head. And I don't know, maybe I, I haven't figured that one out yet. Maybe that's my higher self coming through the middle. I don't know, but, but that helps too, like to pay attention, to set them where you want them. And they're just always there. And then when you hear, you pay attention to where it comes through in the head, that's a technique that's worked well for me. Yeah, that's genius. That's what that's that's what it feels like for me, as well. It comes. Yeah. You can feel where it's coming in. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's a good. That's a good. That's a good pointer. You can feel. Yeah, I just wanted to, I wanted to share that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. It's been Thank you. you. I appreciate love it. Being. Thanks for being with us. Oh, I love you guys. I love. I you love guys. you. <laughs> love you too. Enjoy. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> okay. Let's see, how do I do this? There should be an X somewhere. That's what you think. Or, or maybe Diane has to X. Do I have to do it? I you think you do. Have to? Is there a little X that you have? Well, I'll close it and then I'll come back in. I guess that's the only X I have. No, that's just going to pause you. Well, it says leave. I leave. I'm Lori, leave. Lori, uh, uh, touch that there. part of the screen where you see Diane. Yeah, I am. And nothing oh. is up? Hide live video. There we go. Okay, it, what it's, the two, it's the two of us now. I know. What did I do? I have no idea. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Before before we continue, as we were as we were kind of finishing that up, a lot of people uh, brought up uh, schizophrenia, and I gotta bring something in at this point because it's really really interesting. I I just want to share something that I was taught about schizophrenia. Um, and it doesn't mean that this is the only truth. This is just one thing that I was taught. So that, that's where it starts. That's where it ends for me. But when it comes to multiple personality disorder, disorder schizophrenia, um, whatever the differentiation between those two would be, when it comes to a body, there can be a few situations. There can be, or two situations that I know of at least. There can be one soul living in multiple bodies at the same time, simultaneously. So we would call those parallel lives. There could also be multiple souls inhabiting the same physical body. So somebody that's in gamma or fifth dimensional awareness is able to, let's say they have their soul exists in multiple different bodies at the same time. They can actually consciously tap into the experience of, let's say the dog, the Asian man and uh, the Hispanic at the same time and experience their awareness, but that's a conscious way of doing it. 
also, if there's multiple souls living in the same body, they can do the same thing and tap into the awareness of each soul in a controlled way. Schizophrenia, from what I was taught at least, and multiple personality disorder, and it's not a disorder, it would be that same thing happening only in an unconscious way and not knowing how to control that. And the person accesses all of these different awarenesses and, and, and different souls or different awarenesses and different bodies simultaneously. And because they don't know how to, how they tapped into that, I have no idea. But if you don't, if, if you do that unconsciously, it can literally bring up different voices out of you at the same time. And it's not somebody making something up. It's actually different awarenesses and consciousnesses coming through that same awareness that a fixed point in time. So that would be just one explanation maybe of many uh, with, with schizophrenia and multiple personality disorder that people were speaking about. Yeah, I think um, that's great. I've never heard that before. I, the way I see schizophrenia and the way I see a lot of mental sort of uh, experiences that people have a hard time living in this world with um, is that they're, they're accessing um, different realms. They're, they're, they're unconsciously unaware of the fact that they're accessing um, higher realms. And, and listen, one of the reasons that this ascension process happens in a somewhat slow fashion is because we would legitimately lose our minds is believe it or not, whether we are, whether we believe this or not, we would start, we could lose our minds if we shifted too fast. We wouldn't be prepared for how to function in these higher states. Not only would mm -hmm. our bodies not be able to handle that frequency, but we wouldn't be able to handle, you know, a lot of times when people have a massive awakening, they go into a bipolar state, like a psychotic state, because they are in these different realms that they're not, they can't, the computer can't function for mm -hmm. them. So a lot of um, mental, what we call disorders, I, I, I believe is, is the unconscious aspect of them tapping into all these other realms, all these other beings perhaps around them. And because it's unconscious and because their body isn't holding the frequencies that can process it, they mm -hmm. literally are losing their minds or they look, looks like they're losing their minds. hundred percent. It's, yeah. it's. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's just an unbelievable sort of, like, it's, it's, it's fascinating to see that, because after I, I learned at least that aspect of it, the next time I saw somebody that was schizophrenic, it was a whole different experience, because I, I was always taught to see them, oh, that person's crazy, there's something wrong with them, and suddenly I saw it, I'm like, oh my god, it's like, it's a whole different awareness and, and way of seeing a person when you, when you see it through that other lens, which again, is probably one of many explanations of what's going on. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Okay, should we pick another person? Sure. What number? Seven. Yeah, not letting me pick seven. Awesome, go for eight. Oh, it let me do eight. Nice. Sorry, seven. I think there's a leave button for that person, so they have to click the leave button. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Lori. Hi, Lori. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Hey. Yay. What's your name? Palladian Princess or something like that? <laughs> I'm so, I just, I was like, oh, is that me? Oh, my God. I'm blushing. I'm, I cannot believe it. Okay. Hi, guys. <laughs> what's your name? I totally manifested you. Yay. What's your name? <laughs> um, my name is Laura. Laura, nice to, nice meet, to you. meet you, Laura. Nice to meet you too. Nice to finally meet you and see you and connect with you. Wow, this is just so divine. This is unbelievable. This is like the most Where amazing. From, Laura? Where, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm from different lands. So I'm from originally, I'm from Romania, but right now I'm living in Montana. Nice. 
So, yeah, and I've been living around the world in other places as well. But right now, currently, I'm living in Montana for about six months. Where are you in Montana? And Billings. I don't know yeah. where it is. I only know Big Sky. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And Bozeman. And Bozeman. Oh, yeah. I'm familiar with Bozeman. It's about an hour away from here. I haven't been to places here yet, so I have yet to actually um meet the the surroundings and all that um but wow <laughs> i don't even know where to start oh my god this is just so surreal <laughs> oh, wow i love you guys i just i have been following you guys and um i'm in your guys' community and i have been following your all your videos and lives and just the way that you are so amazing. And I just, I have so much gratitude for you as, as beings, as being here and also just to be here with you and, and share this moment right now. It's just so amazing. Thanks for all the support and all the love. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It's awesome to be here with you. Do you have a question? Anything you um, want to ask us? Yes, oh, I have a million questions, but I guess the most um uh the most important one that uh it would come to me right now, it would be um it's just um I have been going through a lot of isolation ever since I've been in a uh, in the states. So to me this pandemic is just basically I don't feel it because I've been isolated for a long time like it's just I feel like all this time that I've been isolated has been almost like my training ground like my boot camp but now I have been really feeling a lot of difference and a lot of awakenings happening in my body and um it's just it's been kind of hard lately to basically navigate and understand how to ride this 3D, 3D waves of frequencies and everything. And, and, and mostly because I'm in a, in a place in my life where I need to choose a path that... Um, so let me see how can, how I can rephrase this. So mm -hmm. I know what I came here to do. I I already know what my calling is. But at this moment in my life, um, I need to choose something that is not aligned with who I am. And it's more of a dense thing than more in the 3D world, which it's it's weighing on my heart and on my soul pretty heavily. And I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to get out there in the world and just do the basic thing as if finding a job, being a nine to five job or being that type of regular person where I am totally <laughs> not even <laughs> aligned with because what I am meant to, to do and what I've came here to do is completely different and it's also something that you guys are doing and it's helping others um, heal themselves and I'm on a healing journey myself right now um, I'm still um, working on it and I do want to eventually help others as well in their journey with trauma and all this stuff because I feel like I'm I'm capable and I feel the calling pretty hard. So So are you are you are you let me just interrupt you. So are you are you feeling like there is a call that you have to go out into that three D sort of matrix and get a job and make and get 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 paid? I mean, is that the direction that you're feeling pulled to, to, to go for? Not that you want to. Is that the question that you're asking? Is the question 
that you are feeling like you're going to have to go do that and you don't feel in alignment with it? Exactly. Yeah. I, I feel like I have to do it, but I don't feel in alignment with it at all. So I don't know how to take it and how to navigate through it and just, I, I, I mean, um, I've been like studying a lot about manifesting and manifesting in 5D and all that stuff. And I have been manifesting also quantumly too. It's just, you know, um, for the past weeks and months, I've been a really heavy energies. Like how you guys have been feeling, especially you, Lori, with the, with the loneliness that you were talking about earlier. And, and I totally, totally resonated with that exactly feeling like the loneliness heavy, heavy on me, the low vibes so so heavy to the point that I was just thinking like what's the what's even the point of this like I don't understand it no more so what's but the, I kept on what's the question well, that you be, be, before we go to the question I want to I want to intervene and say something if I'm if I'm I think I'm understanding your big picture here correctly and all I want to do is explain uh uh because number one I resonate with what you're saying because I've, I've gone through and in ways I'm still going through the same exact thing First and foremost, I want to start with healing is also part of why you came here. So there's never a point of like, I always make differentiate between the words awakened and awakening. I don't believe in awakened because awakened implies there's an end. We hit a wall, there's no more room to grow. And that's not how it works. That's not what we're here to do. We have limitless potential and it's not about that destination of awakened. It's about the journey of awakening. Okay. And that journey is life, whether you're, you're physical, not physical, it's a journey of awakening and reaching higher levels of awareness, higher levels of consciousness, higher vibrations and the like. When it comes to what you're saying, the way I have gone through it in the past and I'm still going through it in some ways, but different because I've, I've, my, my situation has changed a little bit, is I, I like reframing situations. So there, there are things when it comes to job and work and all that, that it's not my calling. It's not why I came here to do it, right? But what is it? It is a stepping stone, okay? So your, your alignment, and I don't wanna speak for you, but I'll speak for myself, my alignment and what I was doing was not always in alignment with one another. But a stepping stone doesn't always have to be your end all be all of where you're headed. A stepping stone sometimes, even if it's something that you're not aligned with in this moment, teaches you certain things that bring you closer and closer and closer to that path. So if there's one thing that I can sort of recommend based on my own experience of what you're talking about, I would say, Whatever it is that you have to do in the meantime, again, honor that we live in a physical world, in a 3D world. We do need money to survive, to feed our children, to feed ourselves and our family. It's something that we do need in the life that we're experiencing right now. And so long as instead of sort of resisting whatever you're doing, see it as a stepping stone that's bringing you closer to that path, not the destination because there is no point. Just closer to that path, to be aligned with that path, it can do actually a lot of greatness for you, even if you don't feel aligned with it in this moment, because it will bring you closer to that point and that path that you're speaking of. Wow. Yeah, you totally answered my question, Jason. Wow, yes. Wow, I totally agree, and I, I can definitely feel it. Yes, yes, wow. I think it's also, I mean, a good, a good piece that you're bringing up is like, you know, we live in duality, we live in polarity and we, you know, we make three, we make 3d bad. We make it like this, this, this awful place that we have to go and be a part of. And we are in this third dimensional matrix and we'll be in it. Even when we are continuing to shift into higher states of consciousness, we do not leave this third dimensional matrix. It doesn't, go anywhere it's just a shifting and so 
if we can accept that this matrix isn't the devil, it's not a bad thing. It's, 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 if you can see it as the game that it is, and then it doesn't have power and control over you. And then you're playing it. Like, I'm going to play you. You're not playing me anymore. <laughs> I'm going to go in, I'm oh, going to get this job, I'm going to make some money so that I can get out and do what I need to do. Instead of being the victim of like, oh my God, I have to go into this matrix. And, and that takes a lot of reframing of your lens, right? Like the reframing, the reframing, the reframing over and over again of how you're going to choose to play in this now moment so that you can jump into what you came here to do. Many of us have to be in um, jobs in the now moment that we might not resonate with, but we can change the lens around it. Also, holding the the aligned state that you are already in as that healer. So that's what I did when I was moving out of my, my job. I was like, dude, I'm already doing the work that I came here to do. I'm just finishing up this piece that I'm doing in this corporate job right now, this private equity firm, right? So I'm in a private equity firm, but I also know exactly where I'm going to go and what I'm going to be doing. So you hold those, you hold that piece. Um, you know, so reframing i think is a really really big piece you're going to play yeah. the game you're not going to be in the game got it yeah. you're playing the game have fun with it yeah. have a good time yeah. with it it's an experience in and of itself it's it is the journey yeah oh my god oh my god i love it yes, yes thank you yes, so yes, much yes. for your question my love thank you it's it's thank a lot you of guys thing. thank you for existing thank you for being <laughs> here thank you for picking me oh my god this is such a great awesome sign like you're welcome. i love you guys yes. thank, love you. You, thank you for being here laura bye laura thank you I think bye there's a little button that you can push but i don't know is there something that says X um, out? i'm just gonna turn on my light you know what it does not but I'll just turn it off. Let me see. Hold on. There we go. Let's see. Oh. oh I okay. don't know how this thing works. I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> I don't either. You know, it's a really powerful piece here because we, we, we have this idea of like, you know, the third dimension is such a bad place. And I understand resonance, right? Like I don't resonate with this, but you can eat if you, the, the, when you're in suffering, you're not in acceptance, right? Mm -hmm. So when you are in acceptance of what is and, and you start to play the game, um, you're free. You're like, dude, I'm in control of this. I'm playing this game. I'm going to go in. I'm going to choose how to play and, and, the, and how I'm going to navigate this. And then I'm going to get out, right? So I think that's a powerful piece right now for a lot of people as they are. 100%. Um, and listen, it's not, it's not easy. Like even today, there are certain things that I'm transitioning out of that I can't just abandon, you know what I mean? I, I have to honor where I came from and what I'm doing and certain work and all that. And it's not something that I'm aligned with. It's not something that I have a passion for. But, you know, it's, it's just honoring the system because there is a system here, right? Even with the matrix. And I, I've spoken about this in the past where it's like, if you're on either side of the spectrum of, of like extreme, if you say, screw the matrix, I'm out, or if you're too much in it, I mean, there, there's, there's like an imbalance on both sides of those things, because if you don't honor the matrix, then you don't honor the, the literal experience that you're having because we live in it. If you're only existing in the matrix without seeing that there's something bigger, then you're, it's living a life of illusion because there's no awareness that there's something bigger. So the key that I found that I practice always, and that I exercise kind of always, is honoring the matrix, living in the matrix because that's what we experience, but having a, an awareness that there is something much bigger than this. This is not the end all be all. It's more of a tool and a medium that we use to experience the life that we live in today. Yeah. You know, the thing that happens as we, as we evolve is that we step into this kind of quantum space. Mm -hmm. And the quantum field has always, is always here in every now moment. But when you start to understand the quantum field, you start to, you start to understand that there is no black or white. Mm -hmm. There is no this or that. There is no one. You and them. Right. There's none of that. Right. So it's like you are starting to really understand this unified field where 
everything's existing, which means that you are in a third dimensional matrix as you are also learning to anchor the 5D matrix and you don't make either one of those good or bad because if you do, you will be in suffering. You, you hold the knowingness that this is what it looks like, 3D, 5D, hanging out together, right? You may experience more 3D in one moment and more 5D in one moment, all in the same now moment. And if you just live in a state of surrendered beingness, where you are allowing yourself to experience these different matrices in a fun way, choosing the, choosing the way you respond to everything, yeah. it's a whole <laughs> different game. It's a whole different game. Um, and you can start feeling the difference between like, Dude, that grocery store was major matrix, like, you know, and then when you're in some other space, it's like, oh, okay, this feels much more of like ID matrix, right? Um, and, and, and not making it right or wrong, just, like, just acknowledging the different resonances. 100%. You know, matrix, no matrix, it's still not something separate. It's a unified field, like you said, and we, that we call ourselves individual beings are just different perspective and experiences within that unified field. So we're all the same thing, experiencing differently, expressed differently. But again, we, we all come from that same place. We are all are in the same place. So like you reminded me of something that happened today. Earlier today, I was sitting in a restaurant and there was a massive fight that broke out. Masks, this, that, it was crazy. And the old me would have gotten really heated. And today I sat down and it was really interesting because it was almost like I was in 3D, I was in higher dimensional awareness and I was honoring and observing both. So I'm sitting at the table and some guy was freaking out because me and my family walked in just to the table without masks. It was like 10 feet. And, and certain individuals in my family got really hot and they got hot and I'm just sitting there. And <laughs> I'm like, all right, what am I gonna do? So I'm sitting there and I'll tell you the truth. My, my, I was hot inside. Like, like I had the adrenaline rush in my hands under the table. My hands were shaking, but I'm like, wait a second. There was like this other part of me from a different higher place, if you want to call it. And I'm like, no, 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 don't say anything. Just chill. Have a good time. Honor it, experience it, observe it. And I went through this like eight minute period of like, I wasn't me. I was just experiencing whatever I was going through. That's it. I wasn't the emotions. I wasn't the feelings. I wasn't the thoughts. Even though my hands were jittering, I had adrenaline going through me. I'm like, oh my God, what's going on right now? And I kept asking myself, I'm like, wow, it's interesting that you feel like this. But that was one side. The other side was like, oh, wow. <laughs> totally. Your body, yeah. your body was reacting to that that conscious external that was happening like your physical you can't stop your physical body from having the natural response it's going to have right? well actually you may be able to eventually but breath 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 <laughs> breath breath right but like your body's going to give you that like natural fight or flight sort of a, a response um yeah. then it becomes this this conscious awareness the observer it's the observer that's the piece that's so huge. That's 5D. That's a, that's, that's a 5D state of consciousness where you are the observer. And so yeah. you're watching yourself go back and forth. Am I going to stand up and knock this guy out? No, you're not going to stand up. You're going you're gonna to hold yourself in your physicality and you're going to breathe and you're just going to sit. Yeah, but I really want to knock this guy out, right? So <laughs> it's like, and, but the great thing about awareness and being the observer and, and kind of really moving into these higher states is that this, this has always been here, this piece, right? The observer. Yeah. But until you are able to access it, all you hear is this, get up and beat him up, get up and beat him yeah. up, go slap him mm -hmm. right now, right? But this aspect, this observer aspect way of being is always there. That's why- It's when, unbelievable. When you move, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's just, the, it's just observing it all. And it's a, great, it's a great example, I think, bringing it up because there's so much trauma that's being thrown at us, you know? Um, over and over again right now, so much trauma being thrown and projected onto us. It's all trauma. It's all yep. trauma that is being triggered and it has nothing to do with us. And it's massive amounts of fear that the human is experiencing and a fear of death. The very end of the yes. day is about Big time. death. Big time. And, and you can't scare a human any more than a fear of death. And so, you know, 
underneath all of this is that and and then massive trauma so you know the whole world is is literally purging without realizing they're purging they're 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 they don't realize what's happening they have no idea so they're just like literally you know trigger, like throwing everything onto onto the other individuals it's crazy you know they, they say they whatever they means they say that uh that the most dangerous person is the person that doesn't fear death. And it's not just because of those uh, uh, kamikaze pilots that came in Pearl Harbor because they didn't care to die. It's also the other side of people that are willing to wake up and not believe the narrative that's based on the fear of death. Because if we dissolve that fear of death, which by the way is a massive illusion, nobody can control you anymore. Yeah. I mean, that, that's where it starts, that's where it ends because that's where they got us on the fear of death. So it's powerful. It's, it's powerful. massive. It's huge. Another thing that I want to say is what's so beautiful about this time is the amount of potential and possible triggers that we can experience in a day. Because we have so much opportunity to actually exercise something that we didn't always have. It wasn't always you go out and you have to deal with 10,000 different triggers around you in the grocery store and the restaurant, the movie theater and all that. And it literally, like, it happens like every second of the day, always, wherever you go. So it, the, the beauty of that is that we're almost like, it's like we're always at the gym. We're always working That's, out that part of us. Yeah. And it, it's amazing because, I mean, what other time have we ever had to do that? You know, th this is our time to grow because of how much, uh, uh, triggers are showing up because that, that's where we grow when we're triggered. Well, it's not just about growth. It's about waking up to why you came onto the planet to do the work that you're here to do. I mean, it's so 100%. much more than growth. It's about yes. uh, you came down to volunteer. You came down to be a part of this massive shift. You've got a big role to do. It's time to wake up the billions that are asleep. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jason called me on his way home and he said, Lori, <laughs> This <laughs> legit. I said, hello. This is what he says. Lori, everyone's asleep. And I'm like, what? what you, like, yeah. He's like, no, 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 no. Everyone. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. No, because we're sitting here. We got our beautiful community, thousands all around the world. Everybody's talking, connecting. But listen, true, truth, straight truth. We're the minority. That's what's up. That's what's up. If we weren't the minority, the world would look very very different right now but we are it doesn't mean we're not loud because we wouldn't be censored if we were but so, we're the minority so here's the thing that you were that i want to go back to with what you were saying that it, like literally you can't go anywhere without either you being triggered you triggering somebody else triggers happening triggers happening triggers happening because triggers are the fastest way to clear trauma and when mm -hmm. trauma clears you can anchor higher frequencies Triggers yes. are the fastest way to clear trauma. And when you clear trauma, you can anchor higher frequencies. You can't get away from triggers. You can't get away from your own trauma. And you can't anchor higher frequencies without those two. So that is what is happening. And we, as the Wayshowers, Lightworkers, Starseeds, we're on the front lines. And so literally your job is to say, what's triggering me? Okay, it's about me. It's about me. It's about me. It's about me. Stop throwing everything on someone else stop like like even at the dinner table or at the restaurant right like if you had responded from some sort of triggered that's a trauma response from somewhere some other moment right and so it, it, it's so essential that we understand from this bigger perspective what's happening right now so that we can continue to release these traumas and show up for humanity untriggered like not 100 percent the, 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 the individual that's willing to take that on themselves energetically has a lot more weight than that sleeper that we're speaking about. Not better, not worse, just a lot more weight, which by the way, is the reason why you don't need, when I say majority, I'm not talking about more than 50%. I'm talking about energetic majority. Okay. So the, the, that person who is on their awakening process on that journey has embraced and, and stepped into that path and, and really honored it there's so much power there that you know i think it was on our round table with uh dr christian northrup where she spoke about it it was a number it was either three percent or twelve percent i don't remember what it was yeah it was a small number but but the percent was so small that actually had to be at a certain frequency because the weight of that energy is so much heavier 
than those lower vibrations. Again, not good, not bad, just different and just shifting. So in a sense, by the way, I would say that because somebody said it's unfortunate that we're the minority. Well, if we were the majority energetically today and our world still looked like this, then we got a big problem. So I would say that it's fortunate that we're the minority because we have a lot of room to grow, meaning there's, we're, we haven't hit an end. We're only in the beginning. Okay, if we weren't the minority, it would be a problem. The fact that we're still small energetically in that big ratio of, of and, and big soup of everything that's going on, I mean, for me, it just gives me all the more motivation to push because I know that if the bar is 100 points, we're at like 12 right now. We got another 88 to push, another 88 to go, and it's, it's massive, it's huge. That, that's a motivation factor for me. So you think about the body, you think about a scale, you think about physical bodies holding light. All mm -hmm. physical bodies hold light. It's just a matter of the weight, so to speak, of that light, right? The, the, the frequency of the light within that person's body, giving it some sort of quote unquote weight, let's say. Mm -hmm. Light has much more of a high potency frequency and it has more power. So yeah. you don't need a lot of it. By the way, people are talking about critical mass. We hit crit we've already hit critical mass. It's already done. Otherwise, this wouldn't have unraveled. The yeah. only reason COVID unraveled is because we already hit critical mass. So we had an opportunity, I've said this many times, in the 90s, certain things happened, right? 9-11 happened. The reason we weren't able to ricochet over to this place that we're at now is because we weren't at critical mass, meaning that the frequency on the earth plane in the human body wasn't holding enough light. We've already hit it. Now it's a matter of being it. It's already done. So this number of, of 3%, it's already, it is. We have to take, we have to understand that it's done. We're, now it's a matter of learning how to be in it, learning how to let go of more trauma, learning how to, like, it's, it's a done deal and it's only going to increase. So we don't have to get anywhere. This, this never would have unraveled if we weren't already at critical mass. So. I, yeah, I, I think there's massive change that's obviously already happened, but massive shifting and massive change that's going to happen. I don't have a timeline, but based on my feeling, definitely within our lifetime, definitely within, I mean, I think within the next 10 years, this world is going to look significantly different than how much change occurred in the past 10 years. And I think as we keep progressing, it's going to get exponentially smaller for the amount of change that happens in half the time yeah and and i i, I really feel that's where we're going i think we're, we're due for some incredible things in our lifetime in terms of experiencing in terms of shifting in terms of really everything and um i mean i'm just looking forward to it i'm i'm, I'm enjoying seeing the process unfolding even though it may be hard sometimes it's very hard sometimes i mean the inner work that has to be done the inner work that i'm constantly doing is not for me, it's for the work I'm here to do. So right. every time I'm going through something that's really challenging, let's just take this past week, I, I, there's an aspect of me that's like, yeah, I'm doing this for myself. But there's a larger aspect that's like, well, this is why you're here, Lori. This is actually why you're in a physical body incarnated at this time. Mm -hmm. Take freaking, take, take advantage of the why that you incarnated, which is all the crap that you're experiencing right now and that yeah. you don't want to go through. Take advantage of it because if you don't now, it's going to come up in another now, so you might as well take advantage of it now. And this is, this, is what, this, is, this is why we're here. This is what we're here to do. This is, you know, and there's millions of humans that are waiting for us to, to, to do this. So pay attention to, uh, you know, you guys pay attention to all the... <laughs> Everyone that wants to throw, throw things at you, pay attention to it. It's not yours. It's a 100%. 100%. Let's do a question. Yeah? Cool. Yeah. Uh, give me a number and a side, right or left. Three on the right. Three on the right. Well, give me another number. Five on the right. Another number. Okay, you choose a number. <laughs> No, give me one more. 11 on the left. Okay, that's a good one. 10 on the left, 10 on the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 10, 5, 10, 10. 6, 7, 8, 9. 
Okay, here we go. How, this is from Happy Kathy. Happy Kathy, thank you for your question. How do we react when people try to suggest we get the V? We have to call it that. Are we yeah. good with this one? Can we do this? Um, honestly, I wouldn't take a chance. That's the truth. Okay. We could do it. First of all, take it off the screen. Let's start with that. <laughs> so and for those of you that don't know, there's massive censorship. So we have to be super careful. I don't, how do you want to move forward? What was the question again? How we could speak about it in principle. That's fine. We could, okay. we could speak principle on the foundational level of, of something like that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You want to start? Uh, what was the question again? How do you deal with, some, with something that you don't want to do when somebody suggests that you should do it? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, listen, it, it, you know, this is this, what we're experiencing right now with, with all of this, with all of these experimental things that we're experimenting with, with in the human body, you, you, you want to honor, first and foremost, you want to honor your truth. You want to honor your freedom. You want to honor what resonates with you. And many, many of us, millions of us are going to have to ha make very hard decisions, very hard decisions around how you're going to move forward if you are presented with having to, you know, choose between the life that you may have been living or putting something in your body that you don't want to because it could damage your body or kill you. So let's not beat around the bush. I mean, I have friends in LA that are not going to be able to teach yoga and that's their job, right? That's what they do. So, so it's, it's, it's real. The, the, the choices that we're going to have to make our sovereignty, our freedom, uh, how, how important is it? And that's one level. There is a much higher perspective level. We do have the ability and you and I have sort of touched on this in terms of what we can, how we can shift our own physical structure. Right, there is another layer to sort of this whole thing, um, but I don't. You, you have to be at a state of awareness and a state of consciousness that you could shift whatever comes into your body. It's completely doable. It's completely doable that anything that is put into your body you can shift on an energetic level. I believe that one thousand and eight hundred percent, if that's even a number. But you have to be at that awareness and state to be able to shift it and many of us can get there and we can practice getting there but in the meantime your state of consciousness when you are receiving anything into your body is everything it's everything um so i say hold firm to your truths for as long as you possibly can okay i'm gonna answer mine you covered everything that I could probably think of for now on the energetic side of it. I want to cover a different side to, to make it a wide answer. Uh, and the side I'm going to bring in is a little more 3D of what's going on. Let me think how to say it in a way. One sec. Okay. You know, I do think that what's coming, at least intuitively for myself while you're thinking, um, yeah. is that we are being taught how to shift our physical bodies to be able to not be impacted by it while we still, while we still break out of the matrix, i.e. speak our truth, stand up to the authorities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's really, really powerful. That's a piece of breaking down the system. But there is also a much larger teaching at hand right now that, that we have the ability to step into, which is that no matter what goes into my body, I absolutely have the ability to dismantle it. Okay, so first of all, I completely agree with that. Um, I think that the more firm we are with that belief, the clearer we are in other aspects of our life, the easier something like that would be able to do. Um, and what I believe, I'm not going to state this as a fact, but what I believe is that I, I don't feel that the majority is the majority. That doesn't mean you, whoever you're listening, but I don't feel that the majority right now, the collective, 
on a numbers level I'm speaking, is at a place to do that simply because of the environment that we're living in. We got fluoride in our water. There, there's like, there, there's so much poison from everywhere that it makes it hard. What, what I agree with what Lori is saying is 100% possible. I know that it's possible. But in order to do that, we have to be at a place to do that. And that's why personally, I, I do whatever I can to kind of steer clear of any poison. So like I, I would, I filter my water, I try and drink cleaner water. Um, I have certain like radiation filters in my home and all those things. So I, I try and take whatever I can to clean my sort of surroundings to, to, and that could be a reflection of my belief system, but that's the way that I do it. What I would say is, Wherever you are in, in this process of maybe certain things will become mandatory and we all know what we're speaking about. I, I would highly recommend, this is completely 3D uh, recommendation based off of what I've seen happen to others. Always be like, hold your truth, honor your truth. But sometimes in the world that we live in, especially if you have kids and they have to go to school, it's not always necessary to go on a loudspeaker and tell your truth. You can choose to do that, but I've seen kids be harmed because of that. They can't go to school. I'm bringing this to your awareness and you do what you like. You do whatever, whatever resonates with you, but just make sure you know what you're doing because there are, uh, effects of certain things that we do and especially when you have children that are dependent on a certain system in the world that we live in now unless you're homeschooling or doing whatever you're doing if you speak too loud it can it can end up affecting them on a very 3d physical level on what they'll be able to do certain people and friends they'll be able to hang out with so definitely sit in in alignment and in resonance with your truth always but just always think twice about what you say and who you say it to in honor of your family. And so long as you see the bigger picture and you know what potential consequences are for everybody in the picture, not just yourself, go for it 100%. I just wanted to bring that angle to say that there are consequences that can come out of speaking about certain things. And there are tougher consequences for certain people in specific conditions, especially when you have children. So I always keep that in mind on how I answer certain things and who's asking me specifically. Um, because we do want to keep some, some sort of level of, of ease to keep moving forward in our, in our process. And, and there are certain uh, things that we can avoid just by the certain words that we choose to express and not express. So I, I hope that makes sense. I know that I didn't speak anything directly or, or that clear on what we're speaking about, but I, I would just hate to see a, a child get hurt from a mother or a father's decision that wasn't thought about beforehand. I agree 1000%. I agree one bazillion million percent. <laughs> I mean, yeah. listen, there's really no way to. By, by the way, that's, that, I'm not saying to be fearful of anything. I'm just saying to honor the way things work right now. And to, it, it's almost like what we're doing right now, literally what we're doing right now. Okay, there's a reason why certain things aren't being spoken about clearly, because there's something happening. We're navigating that something. That's it. So everything I just said is pretty much the equivalent of try to navigate the situation, especially if you have a family, especially if you have children in, in the best way, not due to fear, just due to acknowledgement of what's going on in this present moment and your current experience of life, certain mandates and certain laws. That's, that's the only place that I'm coming from. No fear, straight up acknowledgement of what's happening. And now let's figure out how to get around it. That's it. I'm, I'm a big uh, believer in when there's a will, there's a way. When there's a will, there's a way. There really is, I promise you. I apply that to every part of my life. There's nothing you can't do. It just takes uh, uh, some calculation figuring out 
how are we going to get around X, Y, or Z? I do want to say before we move on to another subject, yeah. you know, we're not talk, we're not saying specific words, you guys. So just be, you know, try to figure out what we're saying. But there are millions that are not on board. Millions. Billions. One million. Billions with a B. Okay, and they're going to convince you. The media will convince you that you're the la that you're the one not. They're going to yeah. convince you that you're, the, sh that you're the, the black sheep or the pink sheep or the white sheep. They're gonna convince you of that. And so if there is anything you get from this, regardless of what your, your beliefs are around any of it, there are more people, more humans than you realize that are not falling for it. So, you know, there was a comment that said, I feel like I'm gonna be the last one. No, 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 no. Yep. Um, the way we get through this is that we remember that there are millions upon hundreds of millions of us, billions of us that are going to have to stand in our sovereignty. And by the way, many are on the verge. There are so many right now on that line of like, eh, I'm not sure I want to go all the way that way and really destroy my belief systems. But they're, 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 we're really at like a, like a really important point. It's beautiful because listen, I mean, you know, there's people in my life that we do not have the same ways of living and believing and belief systems, but they see what's playing out, right? So it is unraveling, you guys. It is the, it, it, the, 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 the curtain is going to be, uh, you know, pulled apart. I can promise you that the curtain is being pulled apart right now. So this is always the highest timeline for humanity. It's, it's the highest timeline for humanity. And it, it feels like it's going to get very, very bad. But I can promise you that there is a lens of it getting very, very bad. And there is an absolute lens of it getting much, much better. These are happening at the exact same time. We just have to stay focused on this lens. We've got to stay focused on the lens of, yeah, shit's going crazy out there. And this is the highest timeline. I hold the higher frequencies in my body. I keep that perspective. I don't buy into this. And off we continue to pull the human collective. So really focusing on that is huge, 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 huge. And, and really big also is even if you don't believe or you're not in alignment with what somebody else is saying, no matter what it is, respect is massive also. Because the most beautiful relationships that I find are when I see two people with two completely opposite beliefs and there's still a beautiful connection because that's not what defines us. Whether you get something or you don't, whether you believe in something or you don't, let's respect each other and let's just continue moving forward in our own way and we'll, we'll impact one another just energetically. Yeah. It's, it's how it works. I mean, that's the best thing that we can do is just let everybody have their freaking choice. Just let, 100%. let everyone be, just let it be. All you need to focus on is this sovereign being right here. This 100%. is how you shift the entire human collective yeah. right here. And you speak and you be, and you do you. We did a good job with that one. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Spoke, without spoke, doing any, without. <laughs> All right, do we want to bring one more person on or do we want to do one more question? Do you want to do one or the other? Are we choosing? Sure. I'll let you take it, whatever you want. What? Okay, give me a number. Nine on the right. One, I'm gonna oh, bring uh, it, it may not be right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I'm going to bring somebody on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa, this person jumped in right at nine. That was weird. Sammy, you jumped in at nine. That was very bizarre. Okay, Sammy. I love <laughs> this, this multiple chat. It's so awesome. What's up, man? Hey. What's up? How are you? Fabulous. How are you? Great. Where are you? Um, in Beirut, Lebanon. Nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. What about you? I've, I actually don't know where you guys are at. I'm in California. I'm in New York. Cool. So yeah, I've been following you guys for a while. I love it. I love it. Yay! I, Thank you. Like, 
Yeah, I feel like um, things are are really unfolding in a way that's just connecting everything together. Like we're all just connected, and there's just this one big purpose for all of us, really, that we're all trying to reach. Um, <laughs> for me, being for me, yeah, for me, being in Beirut is like. Um, Like everything you guys talk about, you don't know what's going down here. <laughs> like the 3D life that I'm living here is ridiculous. It's, mm -hmm. it's so low on a crazy level. Like today, I just I'm coming back home and they're they're burning tires and they're protesting. There's people trying to like just crazy shit going on around here. So it's very hard for me to stay grounded. I see everything. I know everything. I talk to everyone. I know what they they need. Like I know what I know too much to the point where it's like mm. um, hard to stay grounded. Hard to go through the steps that I have to go through on this three D. Yeah. Um, and I know that you kind of answered this question because earlier someone came on and you were like, "It's about enjoying each step." Because mm -hmm. really we're not heading to something specific or to a destination that's specific. It's about enjoying the journey and taking each step. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very hard for me to to enjoy being grounded when everything around me is just too low. Especially when I'm really like, I feel like, I don't know, <laughs> too far from here. And I'm I'm always tired, and I'm always sleeping, and I'm I feel like I'm doing things that are like outside of here, <laughs> and uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's very confusing times, very confusing. Yeah, you're fully lit up. So let me tell you, let me show you, let me tell you the vision that that, that I'm being shown of you. Uh, <laughs> so you're like a a computer right and so when you walk outside there's like all these it's like your your the network is like firing and you're and you're seeing this you're seeing that you're recognizing this you're hearing this you're knowing this you're you're like like there's all this like firing of like the computer is just like and you're you're like everything is clear so it's the trick like you're speaking about you can see the triggers and you learn the lesson from the trigger mm -hmm. but you can actually like you can actually see it in a way that most of us can't is what I'm saying. Like, it's almost like you're, you have this, like there's something unique. It's not unique, but it's, it's, there's, there's a system working within you. That's, that uh, is a blessing and a curse because you can't turn it off. Yeah, Dude, you're so, po I'm just, I'm just sitting here experiencing what's going on and you have so much power. Yeah, I knew like I, <laughs> I knew everything that was gonna happen before it happened. Um, you guys were also talking about it. I experienced it. I knew I'm gonna come on and talk to you guys. I knew Jason was gonna say that to me. Like, no, I'm, my body's I'm, getting goosebumps I'm, again. I'm Lori, not... Lori, I'm I'm in a I'm in a like, I'm we're all in the matrix. But I'm put in the matrix in a specific way where I'm climbing too fast and it's just. It's not too fast. And and the 3D things that I have to do, oh God, like you don't understand. It's like you guys think it's low. You don't know the options that I have here and the shit that I have to go through. Like it's just. Yeah. So. And it's like I'm waiting for something to pull me out to my purpose straight to it. Like, I know I don't have to go through the steps. No, you're in it. Yeah, I don't have to go through the steps. Jay, I think Jason gets what I'm trying to say. Oh, no, I'm with you. I, I'm letting you finish. I'll come in when the time's right. Yeah. OK, listen, Yeah. let's let's just get to it. Number one, you're a badass. We're going to start with that one. You're a straight up badass. You have a lot of power. You really do. You have a power of. of like I see you, I see the power of a king. That's the truth. That's why I'm like, I'm, I'm watching you and I'm mesmerized by your energy because you have a lot of power. The one thing that I'm feeling as you're telling me what you're telling me is, number one, I have no idea what you're experiencing. Let's start with that. 
I have no clue the difficulty of what you're going through. I have no clue what you're going through in your country and the energy that you're feeling. I have no idea. But I can tell you one thing, regardless of the severity of what you're going through, the principles remain the same. Okay? And you're going through a lot of different things, a lot of difficulty, not for it to bring you down. And I know you know that. Right now, we're speaking for everybody else. You're not a person that we're... I'm going to I'm gonna talk on my... I'm not talking to you, okay? This conversation right now at this moment is happening for everybody else that's listening. Yeah. That's why you're here, Sammy. You're, you're here and you're going through experiences not to dwell on them, to learn from them in order to teach others. That's your energy. That's your presence. That's what you got. Yeah. I know. Okay. So you were thrown into whatever you're thrown into. You call it whatever you call it, that really, really low place to shoot you freaking high, man. <laughs> that, that's why you were there. But then how do you continue to be in this 3D and how do you continue to stay, I don't know, like um, through it, I guess. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to put it into words. You Listen. have to, you have okay, go for it. You, you, the, the word that's coming in. So you, so the, the word that I'm seeing with you, okay, is master. So we're all learning to become masters. Some of us are already masters. You're already a master, okay? Which means that there's nothing you need to do in order to tap into why you came here and why you incarnated. So you have to now surrender you have to surrender to what you chose to incarnate and do on this earth plane. You have to surrender to it. And th there is a massive amount of anger and rage and all these different emotions around it because when you start really recognizing who you are, where you are physically on the earth plane and what you're here to do, you can have a lot of rage around it and a lot of anger and a lot of every emotion. You know the name that's coming up a lot. I was just talking to him yesterday. I don't know if you follow Feel Good, but I Feel do. Good has the same computer system in him like you do. And I was just talking to him yesterday about what he's capable of doing and how he has to kind of hold back a little bit because he knows so much and how, how he learned to balance that. And you have a very similar computer type system in you. And you, you're, you have to learn how, you have to accept it. You have to surrender to it. There's no mistakes. This is what you chose. And you chose one of the most dense areas on the earth plane for a reason. And you came in, Sammy, completely ready to go. So yeah, now no. it's a matter of figuring out how you're going to do it. And by the way, your questions of why, how, all of that, everybody has answers, but your answers are literally at the surface. Okay, they're, they're answers that you really have very, very available to you right now. You're yeah. amazing, dude. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. You're amazing. Whatever oh. is going on right now, continue moving through it. Try and do your best. Let go of that resistance. Continue going. And know that you're going to get to really high places, man. I, I can see it. I can feel it. I hope you and I keep in touch. I really do. Because you're yeah. going to get to incredible places. And you're going to reach a lot of people through your experiences. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. It's very clear to me. Um, I don't even need to calm myself down or like do any practice to myself in the 3D world to keep that going, if that makes sense. Like, I don't need to meditate. I don't need to sit by myself. I don't, like, it's just... No, you're I, in. Listen, you're, you're, you're done. You're in. You're what all yeah. of us are trying to... A lot of us are trying to get to. So if you know yeah, that you're I, already in, Sammy, okay? So here's what you need to start to, to... Here's the lens that you can start to kind of see if you can start to put on. You already are using this lens, but let's just talk about it over time. You're already in. You're already on. Your, 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 your purpose is now. There's no getting to it. So when you get up in the morning, your purpose is on. The light switch is on. I'm on. How am I serving today? 
How am I serving today? It sucks being here. It's dense. It's heavy. There's burning of the of tires. There's people that are ki being killed. There's being there's torture. There's all these things that are happening. Why am I here? Why did I choose this country? Why did I choose this city? Why am I already lit up and ready to go? How am I serving today? And how do I surrender and allow myself compassion for every single emotion that you're feeling? There's a reason for all of, 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 of the, everything that, that's, that, that, this, that, that, that is right now for you. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. Sammy, I, I don't know uh, if what I'm going to say is going to make sense. I'm just going to go for it. I don't know what it means either. But what I feel is either right at this moment or coming very soon, there's, there's a big decision that you're making. And I don't know what that decision is. All I have to tell you is don't be afraid to take a leap because you, you're going to be good. You already are. Thanks, guys. There's a massive amount of surrendering to you that needs to be, be settled into. Like, like. <laughs> I knew you guys would feel that, too. <laughs> yeah. You got to surrender to what's who you are and what and what and where you are. Um, and and then start to try to practice. It's almost like you're going to put a new suit on and you're going to walk, wake up and you're going to walk out and it's a whole new Sammy. You're going to see all the crap. You're going to feel all the emotions, but you're going to have a new suit on. And it's like, okay, how am I, how am I impacting? Because your body alone is, is, is impacting. Your body alone is impacting. You're just, you're just remembering yeah. how to do this. It's not easy. Yeah. You you're a master it. walking. You're a master. <laughs> you got it, dude. You're a master walking around in some of the densest parts of our of our world. Uh, you know, you can have all the f you this sucks that you want, um, but you're still you're still going to show up and do what you came here to do. I know we'll, we'll connect again some other time. Maybe then I'll know, or I'll be, I don't know. Maybe then I'll have uh, a better sense of direction, I guess. Because I know what you said, Lori, in terms of like, you're going to feel like a new Sammy, you're going to put a suit on. I already know that. And I know to the point where I know like I can pick any suit I want. And it's not even a matter of choosing which one because there's no right or wrong in that sense. Um, so I'm trying to get to something that's really far. And it's going to be... You said it, like it's going to be like a boom. But I'm going to get there even faster than wearing a suit. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense, but can you get there right? Can you get there now? Can you get there in the now? There's nowhere to, there's no, it's now. Yeah. Can you be in that now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Last thing. <laughs> Press the reset button on what you know and what you think you know. That's all. Press the reset button. Be, be okay with not knowing certain things as well. That's how you reach the place of no limitation because when you know, you limit. Yeah, and that's the decision that I have to make that you told me about. I see a reset button. Press your reset button. Forget what you think you know. You can have that in you. You have very strong belief systems. But don't, don't let your belief systems be your limitations. In other words, press the reset button on what you know. Cool. Okay. Press that button. <laughs> All right. It's so it's like when Superman it's like when Superman went into the um he goes into the uh the telephone booth, I think. Mm -hmm. And then he you guys are too young probably, but Superman would go into the telephone booth and then he would like, swirl around and he would come out as Superman. That's like what he, <laughs> that's like, what he, like outfits and jump. <laughs> Is anybody with me on this? Because these two. Not <laughs> like you're all by yourself on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sammy. What a beautiful. Thank you, Sammy.
Thank you for uh, for choosing to do what you came onto the planet to do. Honestly, it's a it's a big mission. It's a big purpose. It's a big one. So um, I thank you in advance for everything that you're going to be doing for the for humanity. Thank you. Thank I you, guys. You. Press the yeah, button, and you got it. I love you guys too. All right. See love if you, you too. see if you can exit out of this. I don't know how to exit out of it. Just gonna press the big X. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Press that X box, X button, see if it works. Wow. Yay. Beautiful, beautiful way to close. Yeah, such a great way to close. You know, it's so interesting that we just, I love, I love being able to do these because you, you connect with so many different people from all over the world that are, that are that are that are warriors that are here to to do the work as 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 as, as light warriors, um, and we have to be all over the planet. We can't just be in uh, in the in the beautiful places. Uh, we, we're we're all spread out. Um, we're all spread out, and and we are all doing this together. We're not 100%. doing this alone. We're not doing this alone. Um, what a beautiful reminder of just how unique we all are. You know? I had a great time. <laughs> that, was, that was an awesome time. It's been I two hours. Time. Yeah, we did two hours last time. Yeah. So we will see. It goes. It'll be up on our YouTube channels. Um, and uh, it'll be up here on my Instagram. Tomorrow. We have our global meditation. Yay! Three three at three p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's New York time, so whatever California, it's going to be twelve, and whatever other time zones, we adjust accordingly. Uh, what number is this? This is our our sixth one. This is our sixth one. Is it? Three, yeah, sixth one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That. Yeah. So six, five, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, six. So, so um, yeah, tomorrow we're, we're doing our global meditation, three, three at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific, and the other time all around the world, streaming live on Instagram, on just like we're doing right now, live on YouTube, on my channel, and live on Facebook through the Facebook event page. Um, you don't have to be a part of the Facebook event page to tune in. You can tune in on any platform and there will be replays after for everybody to be able to join in and watch. And remember, it's just as potent at any point in time where you watch it because time doesn't actually exist. So you enjoy it whenever you watch it and have a good time with it. Yeah, I'm excited to do it. It's going to be a powerful we're, one. We're going to be starting 15 minutes before just to give everybody time. It's going to be a 10 minute meditation. So, um, yeah. Uh, 2 45 p.m 11 45 a.m pacific we're going live 15 minutes in we're going to start for 10 minutes in silence beautifully together united and uh yeah honoring our sixth global meditation and um shaking the earth a little bit shining some light rattling the systems yep and Love rattling systems we're going to battle the systems. We're going to uh, shift the consciousness. We're going to do what we came here to do. Yep. And with that, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific, 15 minutes before, just to get set up and tune in. Thank you guys for being here with us. We love you so much. We appreciate all of your love and support um, yeah. and for walking through this with us. Uh, moment by moment. Thanks, Jason. I love you. Thank you. I love you all. Thank you for being here. And till next time, this show's awesome. It's a re no, it's like a recharge. I'm like, wow, I'm like watching it, but I'm also doing it. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a really good one. It's good. A lot of fun. It's good. All right. Love you guys. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.